Hey everyone, and welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to create, analyze, and optimize your dynamic search ads. We're gonna learn how to analyze the performance of your dynamic search ads, control your ad copy, and make sure that you're optimizing for the right conversions and how to get them at scale. Automation poses a pretty big risk to our job security, um, especially in the digital media buying um, industry. However, as PPC marketers um, you know, develop, these algorithm-based tools have really changed the face of our jobs. While we once spent a lot of our time doing keyword research, making ad copy, adjusting bids, Google's machine learning automates tasks for easier account management. However, I don't think we're going to be replaced by robots anytime soon. A set it and forget it approach to automation will definitely drain budgets and flood websites with unqualified traffic. That's why it's important that we partner with our machine learning tools to make automation successful and guide the algorithms in the right direction. It's my belief that we aren't going away anytime soon. Now, let's get into how this applies to dynamic search ads and why dynamic search ads are so important. Well, DSAs crawl your website for keywords. No keyword research is required. The system then dynamically serves relevant landing pages and writes headlines for the ad. From e-commerce to B2B, dynamic search ads are important for any account for three reasons. First up, you can find new keywords. 15% of Google searches have never been searched before. When you're performing keyword research with the Keyword Planner tool, many keywords won't appear because they haven't been entered into the Google search bar yet, or the search volume is simply too low. Queries are becoming more long tail and unique, especially with the use of voice search. Your current keyword set may not capture terms in how users are searching for them. The second point is that it saves time. No keyword research or ad copywriting is required for DSAs, except for the destination lines, and Google automates these tasks for you. If messaging changes on your website or a new landing page launches, ad messaging will update, allowing you to focus more time on strategy, analysis, and other account optimizations. The third point is to identify gaps. Dynamic search ads scour your website and test URLs that wouldn't normally be leveraged as landing pages. You may be surprised to find that a topic, theme, or page that doesn't get typically promoted converts quite well. Analyzing performance data on various pages can tell you what content, formats, or page layouts are resonating and converting best. How to get started with dynamic search ads. So, begin the DSA process by reviewing your entire website and casting a wide net. Your options for dynamic ad targets include categories, specific web pages, and all web pages targeting your entire site. I would recommend excluding obvious sections, such as career pages, investor pages, and topics that marketing dollars really shouldn't focus on. Give the system more pages to crawl, speeding up the learning process, and providing you with more insights to drive optimizations sooner. Now that we've created our dynamic search ads campaigns, how do we analyze the performance? Well, go into your search term report, and if search terms are converting well, Ensure that these keywords get bid on all of the time by adding them to an existing non-DSA campaign. Choosing to leave the term in the DSA campaign is fine and will still drive results, but the regular campaign can help control ad copy and your bidding. After you have those initial learnings from analyzing your top performing keywords and landing pages, create ad groups that put similar pages together by theme, topic, product, or solution. In this way, your analysis can go deeper into what's converting best, and you can eventually pause underperforming ad groups. If the ad groups have differing goals, make sure to place them in separate campaigns. Next up is how you can control ad copy. Lack of control over your ad copy can be concerning for any brand, but there are actions we can take to steer the reins just a bit. Take a look at the search terms report that falls under dynamic ad targets. This important report shows the search term an ad showed for, the headlines used in the ad copy, and the landing page that was served. If the headlines used in specific ads were unfavorable, you can either update the copy on the landing page or add that landing page as a negative ad target. 
You can also choose to only serve certain landing pages as ad targets. Just remember that impression volume may be low if these pages lack lengthy content because DSAs will be only limited to the keywords they can pull. Alternatively, DSAs offer the opportunity to write two description lines. Here you can message some specific brand messaging, a limited time offer, or any other necessary verbiage that needs to be shown to the user. Now, how do you optimize for quality conversions, not just conversions? Common issues with DSAs are unqualified traffic and low conversion rates with high CPAs. Even if you are getting conversion rate, they could be conversions that you don't really care about, like landing page views or registrations that don't convert to being a purchaser. This could be to poor landing page experience, keyword audience misalignment, or lack of smart bidding. If your DSAs are underperforming, here are a few actions you can take. First up, let's talk about keyword exclusions. So take a look at your search term report, sort it by impressions, and then focus on the largest volume keywords first. This will help you understand where the bulk of your budget is being spent and perhaps wasted. Browse the list for irrelevant keywords that dollars just shouldn't be spent on. You can exclude unwanted keywords in a couple of ways. First up, you can check the box next to the search term and select add as negative keyword, or you can look for general themes that you might want to exclude. For example, you may see many search terms that are providing you a low return on investment that all share the same theme. Rather than clicking the check boxes on 100 different terms to do them individually, you can save time by adding a broad match to the entire theme as a negative keyword to the ad group or the campaign. Next up, we have landing page exclusions. The same report can also identify underperforming landing pages similar to keyword exclusion methodology. If this is the case, check the box with that row and click add as a negative URL. Consider the user experience. Consider the goal of the page. If there are pages that don't have a UX that is strong or that don't support the goal of your campaign or organization, for example, if your goal is to get asset downloads, serving an ungated blog post will almost certainly have a low conversion rate since the page doesn't offer a downloadable asset or form. As mentioned earlier, ad groups and pages should all have the same goal within a campaign. Negative dynamic ad targets can be set using exact URLs or rules based on category, page content, page title, or a URL logic. Next up, another recommendation is to use value-based bidding. When coupled with bidding strategies like maximize conversion value and maximize conversion value with TROAS, dynamic search ads are a home run. Setting clear goals for the algorithm to work towards will improve the performance of your campaigns. When the system understands the most valuable conversions, it knows what to strive towards. Ideally, value-based bidding will be leveraged with offline conversions set as the campaign goal so machine learning can optimize for the most important leads and sales based on your backend data. We also recommend that you tap into audience targeting. If you still aren't convinced that DSAs are the right fit for your account, test them out with a valuable first-party audience list. The audience list needs to be big enough to get substantial impressions. Since the people on this list are important to you, the exposure from serving an impression or gaining a click will be valuable even if they do not convert. Layering audience targeting to your DSA campaign should improve the quality of the traffic and teach the algorithms who to go after. As we think about the future of dynamic search ads, it's pretty questionable. We can expect that DSAs are just the beginning of phasing out keywords as we know them. As algorithms advance and machine learning takes over more of the heavy lifting, we should be ready as media buyers to embrace and test new automated features if it means improving our performance. Take this as an opportunity to work smarter, but not harder. Now is the time to shift your focus to strategic thinking, deeper data analysis, and providing additional value elsewhere in the account. As always, thanks so much for watching. We hope to be releasing more videos every week, and please subscribe and hit the bell if you want to learn more about digital marketing. Thanks so much.